Maybe in Hastings. We progress most satisfactorily. The course now is to identify and to remove the red herrings that obscure our true path. Where have our investigations taken us? I will remind you of those moments I considered the most important. You, of course, must decide which pertain to the murder of Elena Stewart, which are additional crimes that, while they may have no bearing on the murder, must still be solved, and what we still must learn before all questions are answered and the guilty unmasked. Are you ready, mon ami? As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. But could I have my sixth clue to the secret of the finger of suspicion first? But of course, the sixth clue is telephone. Telephone. Let's see what we have so far then. Power, lamp, desk, drawer, magnet, and now telephone. Thank you, Poirot. I'm ready to hear what you consider important about what we've learned so far. First, what are the mysteries we are trying to unravel? The murder of Arlena Marshall. Of primary importance. We will explore the possible suspects presently. But let us take a moment for motive. What are your thoughts on the reason Arlena Marshall was murdered? Money. Arlena Marshall was a rich woman, thanks to her career as an actress. The murder of Millie Parsons. We now know enough of the circumstances in the crime to point towards a killer with motive and opportunity. The anthropology instructor, Gideon Fell. And unless Mr. Fell is on Seadrift Island or in Leathercombe Bay in disguise, he is not a suspect in Arlena Marshall's murder. Yet there were several persons who were either intimately or peripherally involved in the case on Seadrift Island. True. And two points remain to be cleared up. Can you name them? Was Gideon Fell the man you mentioned in your story of voodoo? The one who awakens in the night in the greatest of fear? Yes, it was he. Because of voodoo? Is it so hard to accept? If you accept that he himself believed in the power of voodoo? Is Linda Marshall involved in voodoo? The signs seem to point in that direction, I am afraid. Once we hear from Miss Porter and learn what Mademoiselle Marshall hides in her puzzle box, we will have our final answers, I think. The murder of Alice Corrigan. We know little of the details of this case. Only that the husband was implicated and cleared due to the unbreakable alibi. And this crime was committed near Brixham as well. It may yet prove to be connected to the Millie Parsons case. I thought the police proved that Fell couldn't have been the killer. There may be another connection, Hastings. Do not rule it out. The activities of fifth columnists. Yes, it seems clear that Mrs. Castle watches. But not in the name of England. Voodoo on Seadrift Island. Yes, and we have the indications it is being practiced here and by young Mrs. Marshall. The ghost of Tom Cutter. Yes, the ghost who is not the ghost. Do you have any theories as to who the ghost might be? Mr. North. He would certainly seem to be the most likely candidate. The birdwatcher, Mr. North. Yes, the report from Scotland Yard, which I hope you have read. It tells us he is the smuggler. But of what? Is he allied with the Fifth Communists? Or someone else? Bullets and Mr. Blatt. Yes, Monsieur Blatt is shot at, but fails to mention the fact. Shot at by whom? A German U-boat? Possibly. If it were the authorities, I am sure Colonel Weston would have been informed. Yet he did not find the incident of sufficient interest to tell anyone. He even makes up the transparent lie of storm damage. Why? Yes, all of these mysteries still be developed to greater or lesser degree. Now I will list the characters in our little drama. Do you believe that we can eliminate anyone from any of the mysteries we pursue? Colonel Weston. But of course, Colonel Weston is an old friend with the uncompromising belief in the rule of law. Mrs. Hughes. I agree that we can safely eliminate Madame Hughes. 
witnesses will easily establish she was tending to her various business ventures during the time of the murder. Albert Bagby? Of course. While the Monk's Head pub does not open until 11, Monsieur Bagby could not have made his way to Cutter's Cove and back again in 20 minutes. Will Jenks? If the misunderstanding between Will and his young lady had involved Elena, it would have been Gladys who might want her dead. But such was not the case. Gladys Narracourt. Can Gladys have slipped away from her duties at the hotel long enough to commit the crime? It is possible. But when faced with what she believed was her young man's unfaithfulness, her character drove her to sorrow, not murder. Besides, she suspected it was Linda Marshall who was playing up to Will, not Elena. Henry Bailey. The estimable barman. I myself can testify that he was in the bar during the time of the murder. George Strum. His hands? They are certainly hands most powerful. And George may have abandoned the wrecking of the tennis court long enough to commit the crime. But his movements are well known to all, in case he is needed on the bathing beach. He could not count on his absence being overlooked. And again, of course, where is his motive? Now let us turn our attention to the more likely suspects. Which is your choice as murderer? Major Barry. For Major Barry, a man who has lived through the violence of war, an obsession rebuffed by Madame Marshall may indeed have turned to more violence. Horace Blatt. It is true the man has secrets. He would also have had the opportunity to slip quietly ashore at Cutter's Cove and depart in his sailboat during the time of the murder. Emily Brewster. The athletic Mademoiselle Brewster is a woman strong enough to strangle another as your experiment proved? And we have not determined a sufficient alibi for her, I think. And yet, she is another like Monsieur Black, par example, who apparently has no motive for the crime at all. Hilary Castle. Alina could have figured out that she was betraying her country. Self-preservation. I did not see among her many attractive qualities any indication that Mrs. Marshall possessed the instincts of a detective. Still, it is a possibility. Rosamond Darnley. The murder of empathy. To protect the man she truly loves. She is a strong woman who has succeeded in the business world. It is possible she would be capable of such an act. Carrie Gardner. Another who is hiding something? Would she strike down the woman who ruined her husband's business? Oakley Gardner. The likable Mr. Gardner, who takes so long to find the knitting wool, and who was ruined by Arlena Marshall? Stephen Lane. A man so consumed by his zealotry, he has lost his position as a minister of God? The religious fanatic is indeed a man who could be driven to take it upon himself to personally destroy the evil he sees. Kenneth Marshall. The jealous husband? Even the cool customer like Captain Marshall may have the fires that burn deep inside. And there's the money motive, too. Yes, the background check of Scotland Yard should reveal if he has the reverses in business. Linda Marshall. Again, empathy? To protect him from the woman who makes him the cuckold in the eyes of all their world? Already she is attracted by the unhealthy interests. Already she knows the violence that can strike without warning. Yet she would seem to have the unimpeachable alibi thanks to Madame Redford. 